Tucson Lux Living features exceptional products and services for the area's top consumers, bringing together high-end real estate, business, money, and lifestyle. I'm your host, Alicia Kramer, local realtor supporting the area's business professionals with their personal real estate needs. And you know I love bringing on amazing people, and our guest today is certainly an amazing woman. Emma Ariema McKay is an architect, interior designer. She's an author. She has her own podcast. And that just barely scratches the surface. So <laughs> we're just going to get right into it. I want to welcome you to the show uh, first and foremost. Well, thank you, Alicia. It's such a pleasure to be here and talk about your lifestyle and real estate. Well, you have so many specialized skills that really fit into the overarching theme of this podcast. Now, granted, we have guests that come and they talk about money and they talk about um, investing and, you know, all different sorts of things, um, lifestyle things. We had somebody come on and talk about, um, you know, wines and, you know, we're, we're looking at bringing in a lot of experts that have specialized knowledge that they can share but when we're talking about our homes, which is obviously a passion of mine as a real estate professional, you know, I've, I've had this conversation so many times. Right? In fact, I've even been asked the question, you know, why, why do you do what you do? Why, why do you love real estate? And there's something to be said about walking into a property and feeling that alignment with it, where it's like, oh, this is the one. Now, sometimes it's really close, but there are a few things that are just a little bit off. So we have to make a few tweaks, right? And if you've got the vision and you can feel that alignment, if you can feel that connection, you can start to say, all right, well, you know, let's tweak this over here. Let's make this change here. Let's replace, you know, um, these countertops or whatever it might be, right? So I know that you you think the same way, right? It's exactly. when you're working with your clients, it's about creating the feeling, that, that feeling where it's like, oh, this is home. This is my home. This is exactly the way I want it to be. So let's start there. I mean, let's talk about what, what are you doing with your clients on that kind of like deeper level where it's not just the superficial, like pink, picking the paint colors and things like that. What is, what is it that you're experiencing when you're working with people in creating that perfect space for them? Well, I think you, you nailed it, what you were talking about when you can walk into a property and feel aligned with it. It's that feeling. And that feeling is so important. You know, our homes are such a special place for us. You know, it's safety, it's prestige, it's, it's home. And it means so many things to so many people. And everyone has a different sense of what that should be. And that's what I love working with different clients because to express how they are, how they live, is, is their environment. So, you know, a lot of times, as you were saying, sometimes you walk in and some things have to be tweaked, whether it's taking a wall down, whether you like an open floor plan, or maybe you like cozier spaces, you know, it's all that personal preference. It's, I, I think about artwork, how one piece can have someone fall in love with it, but someone else, it has no meaning to it. So it's really providing whatever my clients desires are. So nowadays, you know, there's some things that are really popular, outdoor living areas, cooking areas, finding places to have a home gym, and certainly a home office. So those are a lot of things that are, are happening now. So when you meet with someone, how does that initial conversation typically go? Are you, are you asking them about the you know, the, the exterior stuff, or are you getting into their, their kind of headspace and their emotional yeah. state a little bit too? Yeah, I, I have, I've developed a list, probably two or three pages of questions we go through because it's kind of an intimate process. I really have to know how they live. You know, I have to know 
if two people are sleeping in the same room, if we need a, a separate bedroom. So it's really about how they live and what their ideal way of living is if the house isn't meeting those criteria. So it's, it's really finding out about their, I'll say intangible criteria. Things like light quality. Do you like a lot of light? Do you like a lot of window space? Or maybe you're like more darkness. Some people have eye issues. So it's really finding out those intangible things too. Like you were saying, you know, you walk into a property and um, you have to feel aligned with it. You know, maybe it's those big open spaces. I've had some projects where we've taken out the eight foot ceilings and have made vaulted ceilings because that's the kind of space they wanted. So it's, it's finding out about those kind of things that make you feel. <laughs> and it even goes into, you know, we talk about the kinds of textures, if they do like uh, natural materials or if they like just more flat kind of finishes. So it, it's lots of layers of ideas that we evolve with to start designing. Do you find that some people are much more clear about what the little details are for them versus other people? For sure. Yeah, some people can have that vision and others, it's kind of like pulling teeth. You know, you really have to guide them and ask them even more questions to get to that point of really feeling so they can relate to it. They can have a response to the space they're going to create. I know that certain personality types, you know, they, they're very, very detail oriented. And then you have others who are like, just do it for me. I don't want to deal with it. I've got, you know, I, I've got enough mental load. <laughs> you know, <laughs> right. Just take this off of my plate. When you are working with somebody like that, maybe, maybe they are a, a, a very busy executive, right? Are you able to kind of fill in some of those gaps for them if you feel like you at least get a general sense of what their preferences are? Yes. You know, when you meet with a client, whether it's in their office or at their home, you can get clues of what's going on, what they like already. So that could be, in a sense, reference material in which to work. But every step of the way, I need their approval. You know, I don't want to be a surprise like you see on HDTV. You know, reality doesn't really <laughs> work like that, right? You know, you've so, got to, I found myself wondering so many times, like, was that just a nod of approval for the camera? You know, was, yeah. is, is that really, because right. some of those things are pretty bold, you know, yeah. it's like, okay, that's definitely going to be out of style in five years. Yeah. You know? yeah. And, and, you know, and talking about personalities too, sometimes there are people who are just adamant about how th something should be. And I know it's not right. So it ends up working around that I can kind of guide them to what I know is right and have them think that was their idea. So that's an important thing too, is that, you know, I hate for somebody to do the wrong thing. So I have to guide them into the right solution. <laughs> so that kind of comes around to like design trends and things like that. I mean, what's your stance on if somebody is leaning towards something that you're pretty sure is a trend that is not going to last. Do you just respect that? Do you give them kind of a disclaimer? <laughs> Do you, you know, what, what does that typically entail? Well, I design according to my client's desires. So I recently had a client who wanted a French provincial kind of home. So, okay, so we'll do that. I had a client who is very uh, old world Mediterranean, heavy woodwork and that kind of thing. And that's okay. You know, it's, it's not, it, it depends on what their intent is. If they're going to live in the home, it's got to be what they want and mm -hmm. what's going to make them feel good. If it is, if it's more of a property for, resell, they're, they're going to move and upscale in a few years, then I would maybe have some input. I was just meeting with a client the other day and we were talking about 
reorganizing the floor plan. And I said, well, you know, one solution was making the master bedroom smaller. I said, well, you know, one thing to keep in mind is resell. You know, if we take that much room away, is it going to be desirable when you think about selling? So it depends on the situation. Gotcha. Yeah. I've walked into plenty of homes that, and we're not even just talking about dated, you know, that's a whole different scenario that, you know, kind of comes with the territory you're gonna you're gonna find homes that are definitely in need of some modernization but sometimes you'll see some very bold choices that don't resonate with like 99 percent of the the buyer you know pool and as an agent you're always you know you're looking at some of those things you know if it's paint that's common, right? You see people with all sorts of bold things going on, <laughs> you know, the burnt orange or the, you know, bubblegum pink or whatever it is, you know, that's all minor. But when you start getting into um, very like ornate, like big, you know, built-ins that are very specific to, you know, individual tastes and things like that, I think it, um, you know, can definitely hurt the resale value of a home. And it's, it's always that fine line, like you said, you really do have to evaluate when you're making these decisions, you know, what is, what is the short-term goal? What is the long-term goal? You know, is this my forever home? You know, am I going to be here another 20 years where it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks, it, it matters what makes me happy? Or am I looking at this as a stepping stone home where, you know, in another couple of years, I'm going to basically trade up, you know, and I want as much equity in this property as possible. I want the highest sales um, price for this as possible. And then you have to be a little bit more conservative in some of the choices that you're making. Exactly. And another thing to be aware of for those people who are doing projects and remodeling, that there are certain tax credits and rebates that uh, one can get. I, in my book, I have a lot of resources to um, links to look into those kind of things. So that's something to keep in mind. You know, it's you, you spend the money in an investment, you're increasing the value of your home, but you still may be able to get some rebates depending on what you're doing. Well, let's take a moment and talk about your book. Uh, so tell us about it. Just give us kind of like the Reader's Digest version and um, let our listeners know where they can get a copy of that if they're interested. Yeah, well, I, I wrote it. It started out to be um, the idea of a workbook for my clients. Like I said, I have lists of questions to ask. And so this is really kind of an education on what the remodeling process is. It talks about how to work with your architect. Oh, actually, first, it talks about getting your ideas clear and getting your budget know your budget. Those are the two real important things. And then I talk about how to interview an architect, how to inter interview your contractor to find the right one, because that's such an enormous problem with so many people. You know, you hear those horror stories. So this will help you hone in on finding the right one. So it's, it's just an education process. And as I said, too, there'll be a few um, links to special reports. I have one on when you make an agreement with a contractor or architect, important items to be in that, um, and also the rebates and tax things. So there'll be these extra information in there too. And where can listeners get a copy of the book if they're interested? Good old Amazon. It's called <laughs> The Homeowner's Guide to Stress-Free Remodeling. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Yeah. So I'd love for you to elaborate when your, uh, when you're working with people, what is your role? Because you are an architect, you are a designer. Um, how much of this do you do personally? Well, my big part is the design. It's taking what their criteria is and say if we're doing a floor plan, it's like putting pieces of the puzzle together. If we're doing a a remodel an existing home. It's rearranging things so it really functions well. 
it's also guiding the clients through the process. So few people have not done this before and it's scary and it's stressful. So that's what I want to do is take that stress away because it's an amazing experience. And at the end, it's an incredible achievement. So many of my clients say, oh, I wish I would have done this before because now, now they have a beautiful home. They have everything they want. It functions well. And so it's also guiding them. And you know, through the process too, I want them to be a really great team player because they have to make a lot of decisions. And even through the building, part as, as you go through construction, there's so many things you might realize that you might want to change or find opportunities. That's the good thing. And I don't want people to say, oh, I can't change anything. There, I'll give you an example. There was one um, new home we were building and we originally planned to do a stepped ceiling, but in construction, we, we had this great turret, open, open ceiling. So that was a nice opportunity we had to leave that great feature there. So, you know, I, I also guide them to see those kind of things and just to make the project better. Love that. Now, there may be people that are thinking to themselves, okay, I've been dealing with these things in my home that I've been displeased with. And my inner guidance has been saying, it's time to make some changes. <laughs> And now's as good time as any to take the plunge and make this home what I want it to be. So here we are, me, um, in the greater Tucson area, and you're not here, but you're not that far away either. So <laughs> talk to us a little bit about um, the um, areas that you service and um, what you can um, what you can suggest to people who um, are looking for somebody, regardless of what location they're in. Yeah, well, now we're all used to Zoom and being virtual. Even locally, I there were three clients I never met personally. I met my first client in person yesterday, so these things could be done virtually. Um, what we, we can do a walkthrough like you do with your open houses. And depending on what you're doing, a floor plan would be really important. You know, locally, I can come and, and measure things up and we can start from that. Or, you know, simply you can do a sketch with dimensions and we can start like that. So, you know, I'm available nationally or globally. You can say I know so many people all over the states and the world now. And we can do those kind of things just virtually. Um, when you get into the construction documents, I'm only licensed in California and Nevada. Um, but a lot of contractors will draw up the construction documents for permits. So when it gets to that point, we can just see how we can do that. And we can find a local person to finalize that step if we need. I love the fact that we can transcend um, boundaries, so to speak, you know, um, <laughs> Many, many years ago, you know, you know that I've been a business mindset coach for well over a decade. And that's my, my other business and my other passion. And when I wanted to transition out of the local brick and mortar setting, I decided to start working with people um, using Skype at the time. I don't think Zoom existed back then. So, I mean, <laughs> so you were yeah. way ahead of the time. Way ahead of the times, right. And I, I, you know, there's sometimes that limited perception, like you've got to be here, you've got to be standing next to me. And what I've come to find, and, and this is also um, really prevalent in some of like the, um, the marketing circles that I'm a part of, you know, learning from other professionals that are servicing, especially the more affluent clientele is, you know, people who want the best, they don't care where you're located. They want to work with a professional. They want to work with an expert. And I think that is some, there's something to be said about that, right? So it doesn't matter if I'm sitting in, um, you know, in the greater Tucson area 
And I have a client who is in New York. I actually have a lot of clients for my, my coaching practice that are in New York. I've worked with clients in Europe. I've, you know, Australia. When you want expertise, you appreciate technology so much because it does afford you the luxury of working with somebody of like your caliber who can come in and bring the, that, expertise, right? Being an architect, that's not something necessarily that a lot of designers can, can say. So, um, you know, I just, I say that partially because I think that there's so much value in stepping outside of that comfort zone, you know, and not all of any type of service provider there. It's just because you've got two people with the same credentials does not mean that they're going to provide the same quality of service. Right. So, and now right, as so you, go ahead. As you, as you were talking about virtually, I'm just thinking too, you know, the, the floor plans are one thing, but even getting into finishes, there's national companies all over the US. So if I were to select a floor tile, a paint color, exterior wood siding or something, those can be found locally or those companies can send them all the materials. So it's not like where I am, those materials are only available. So again, virtually and just the sense of our national and global business, we can do those kind of things all anywhere. <laughs> love it. Love yeah. it. I want to um, know where, you know, we've, we've, talked for a while already you know we're gonna run out of time here and there's still so much more that we could talk about but I would love for you to just briefly share a little bit about some of the trends that you're seeing with um, like smart home technology and um, green homes we're hearing a lot more about that what are the trends that you're seeing well design wise things are going more modern you see all the new housing developments are pretty streamlined and even the furnishings inside. So that's that's a big design trend. As far as the actual materials, there's a big movement in the building industry called well building. And what that means is all the materials that are um, provided for the indoors, like carpeting, flooring, paint, that they don't have a uh, VOCs that are to toxins, they're volatile organic compounds. So there's a big movement in that. And also energy conservation, you know, insulation. Uh, many of the codes have increased the, uh, we call them R values, insulation values. So your home will stay warmer when you have your heat on, cooler when you have your air conditioning on. Windows, um, gosh, there's been so many um, incredible new things coming out with with glazing you know triple glazing it can be tinted it can be soundproofed uh, fireproofed um all kinds of things with that let's see um even the uh, air quality um the hva systems are are changing and being more energy conservative you know the solar is becoming popular too and for those kind of projects you can get a rebate possibly. Mm -hmm. And I just learned about a new coating on that you put on your glass windows, showers, and uh, your solar panels to help increase or keep the productivity high on them. And let's see. Um, yeah, technology, everything's, you know, so many things are voice activated. There are skylights now that are voice activated to open. If they have shades in them, you can instruct them to, to pull the shades. So can, that can technology- you, Can you believe that like, yeah. what, um, <laughs> 40 years ago, you had to get up and like turn on a TV right. manually? <laughs> I know, yeah, yeah. So th things, you know, the technology is so integrated into a home now. One of my podcast sessions, actually, I, I interviewed a, a, neck, a local expert who talked about all the different things that were happening. And even for our outdoor living, they have outdoor speakers. And she talked about how to position them for the sound towards your house and not like out into the neighborhood so you don't get <laughs> kicked out. But yeah, it's 
the technology is so integrated into everything, even plumbing, the uh, faucets now are motion activated, sound activated. So it leaks, it comes into every aspect of our homes. Yeah, so true, so true. Yeah. Well, before we run completely out of time, I would love for you to share with our listeners where they can learn more about you. And um, so I know you've got a couple of different websites. Um, why don't you tell us the best, um, the best ways to find out more about what you're doing and to get in contact with you? Okay, my design site is Oriema Design. I'll spell that for you real quickly, A-U-R-I-E-M-M-A, oriemadesign.com. And that'll show you the kind of projects that I do and a little bit about me. My newer website is where I've created the book and also I have a, a digital program that kind of goes into a lot more depth than the book does about the process of remodeling. And so stressfreeremodeling.com is where some of those other information, more educational um, items are on that website. Love it. Yeah. Love it. And I always like to ask my guests right before we finish our episode, if you have any final thoughts that you would like to share with us. Yes. If you are in a home that you don't like things, how they're working or it just doesn't feel right, don't wait to do it. You know, your home is where you grow memories. You know, you, if your kids are smaller, you want to live in something that you absolutely love. Or if you're buying a home, there are so many homes that are just perfect for you. If you have the vision or get some help to have the vision, you can have the exact home that you want. <laughs> love it. Love it. All right. Well, thank you so much, Emma. I know that we just scratched the surface. <laughs> we could have talked a lot longer. I do encourage everyone who has aligned with you and the work that you're doing to, um, you know, reach out and learn more about the services that you provide, or at very least, you know, if you are thinking about remodeling, grab a copy of your book because empowering yourself before you take the plunge uh, can certainly create a much smoother <laughs> process, Absolutely. right? <laughs> Absolutely. So thank you. Emma, thank you, everyone. I certainly do love doing these episodes and bringing amazing, amazing guests. Make sure you subscribe because we have more fantastic content to come.